Iron Flag, the Kwame of Destruction. I am everything that is and no longer will be. Miraculous Ladybug wouldn't exist without the magical objects that grant the heroes and villains alike their powers. The Miraculouses have existed for thousands of years, influencing the course of human history and protecting the world from danger. With so much history behind them, the journey of the Miraculouses to become what they are in the main series is long and challenging. Interestingly, the series glosses over this essential history, keeping the Miraculouses surrounded in relative mystery for five seasons. It's a miracle that humanity created and unlocked the Miraculouses' powers. To better understand the Miraculouses and everything they've become, we're reviewing the timeline of the Miraculouses' creation in this video. You know how much Tiki loves to eat, but do you really understand the Kwame of Creation's appetite for food? Number 1. The Creation of the Universe The dawn of the Kwamis begins with the creation of the universe. The Kwamis are magical creatures who form when a new abstract concept comes into existence. Since the creation of the universe happens before anything else, it means the notion of creation is the first to exist. Tiki comes into existence first, making her the oldest Kwame in existence. She can create any object she desires and, for some reason, luck always appears to be on her side. Other Kwamis gradually join Tiki as the universe expands and new concepts form. Some Kwamis like Plague, Fluff, and even Kalki must be some of the oldest, as creation must have destruction to balance the universe. The passage of time happens naturally, and the Kwamis canonically traveled across the universe before finding and settling on Earth. There are an unknown number of Kwamis in the world. The concepts that create them can range from topics like beauty to mathematics so there are likely to be thousands of magical creatures frequenting the universe, with new Kwamis being born every century. Interestingly, the Kwamis don't exist in a single universe. According to Tiki in Miraculous World Paris, the Kwamis exist in every universe simultaneously. She never tells her wielders about these parallel lives because their human lifespans are too short to cover all the information. However, this means that Kwamis experience and remember multiple lifetimes, which extends their knowledge and wisdom. Parallel universes? Why didn't you tell me about this? It's just, I've lived for billions of years in every single one of these universes simultaneously. Number 2. Human Values After the dawn of humanity, their values begin to take shape. In the early stages of their development, people started to value traits like justice, confidence, courage, and so on. These values gave rise to a different abstract concept, allowing new varieties of divine creatures to be born. The Renlings are the cousins of the Kwamis, and they exist solely to represent human values and empower whoever wields the prodigious. The Renlings allow their wielder to transform into the animals their values represent. However, there are a few loopholes to their existence that don't coincide with the Kwamis. As we see in Miraculous World Shanghai, the prodigious can't shapeshift into an animal form if they don't exhibit their values. For example, Faye can't transform into every animal and has trouble using her new powers when she first becomes Lady Dragon. Also, unlike the Kwamis, the Renlings aren't visible to the human eye, whereas the Kwamis can be seen by any human when connected to a Miraculous. Only the person wearing the prodigious can see these creatures, despite the Renlings having a spiritual connection to a medallion. Greetings to our new Renren. Ren. New what? Renren, Ren, the person who wears the prodigious. Number 3. The Miraculouses Although the Renlings made a connection with humans first, they weren't the only ones invested in the development of humanity. The Kwamis watched as the human race developed and desperately wanted to help them succeed. However, due to not existing in the same material plane as humans, the Kwamis couldn't communicate or become viewed by them. Fortunately, they wouldn't be bound to this fate forever, as 5,000 years ago, a mage made the Miraculouses in ancient China. When the mage created the Miraculouses, the Kwamis received material forms and their current appearances. In exchange for their ability to communicate with humans, the Kwamis now had to serve humanity by granting humans unique abilities, one strong enough to create some of history's most notorious heroes and villains. Sometime after this, the Kwamis realize they can't use their godlike powers without a wielder to help harness them. Throughout the series, we learn about numerous instances when the Kwamis lose control of their powers. In Style Queen, Master Fu explains how Plague destroyed the dinosaurs and sunk the city of Atlantis. In Dearest Family, Plague reveals that Tiki's sweet tooth once caused her to make it rain chocolate for several weeks. Fortunately, as Plague says, these instances can fix themselves with the proper Miraculous Wielder there to help. I'd had too much cheese. The Leaning Tower of Pisa? I didn't see it. Dinosaurs! Number 4. The Order of Guardians 
Sometime after the creation of the Miraculouses, someone established the Order of Guardians. The group is a faction of monks dedicated to protecting the Miraculouses when they're not in use and finding the correct people to wield them in times of trouble. They live and operate out of a mountain temple in Tibet and live by strict rules and ordinances. According to Master Fu in the episode Feast, to be chosen by the Guardians was considered an honor. However, to complete their training, children must leave their families behind and complete trials, like spending an entire day fasting while guarding a miracle box. There are also specific rules that miraculous wielders and guardians alike must follow. Suhan mentions a handful of them in the episode Furious Fu. They include, Kwamis must never live outside the miracle box, guardians may never lose a miraculous, and they may never wield a miraculous. If someone breaks these rules, it could be grounds to have someone ostracized by the guardians. When a guardian gives up the protection of the miracle box or retires, they lose their memories. They forget everything before becoming a guardian to protect the miraculouses and the secret identities of the wielders. The same thing happens to Master Fu at the end of Miracle Queen when he relinquishes guardianship of the Miracle Box to Ladybug, purely to keep it and the Kwame safe from Hawk Moth. If Marinette ever gives up her role as guardian in the future, she will likely lose her memories alongside the Ladybug Miraculous. Unfortunately, when Master Fu was an apprentice, he created a Senta monster that went out of control. The Senta monster devours the entire Temple of Guardians, and they remain inside his stomach for a hundred years, until Ladybug and Cat Noir free them. One of the tests to become a guardian required me to watch over a miracle box for a full 24 hours without any food. Number 5. Power-Ups The Miraculouses in the Chinese Miracle Box were dormant for the past century. The dormancy doesn't include the Lost Peacock and Butterfly Miraculouses or the Turtle Miraculous that Fu uses to protect himself. The latest developments for the Miraculouses occur when Fu chooses Ladybug and Cat Noir as Paris's new heroes. The Guardians keep a grimoire filled with information about the Miraculouses, their wielders, and their powers. The grimoire for the Chinese Miracle Box also contains spells and potions that can provide Kwame's power-ups. Master Fu uses potions for the first time in the episode Siren to give Ladybug and Cat Noir aquatic powers. The pair also have cosmic power-ups that they use frequently to navigate space or travel long distances. It appears that the Miraculouses are ever-evolving as different wielders learn how to use their Miraculouses in unique ways. In the episode Mr. Pigeon 72, Ladybug discovers how to use her powers of creation to make magical charms that protect people from Akumas. However, Shadow Moth adapts to her creation and learns how to create a Mega Akuma, a butterfly infused with so much negative emotion that it can break through her charms. The Miraculous Wielder's evolutionary cycle proves there will always be more to uncover about their magical object. The wielders can also communicate with those who came before them. In the episode Reunion, Marinette uses her Quagatama to speak with Joan d'Arc. The ability to communicate with past wielders gives the current ones vast stores of information to learn from, adding to their power. Lastly, the Kwamis can also unify with one another to enhance their powers and create new heroes. In Recreation, the series introduced the existence of larger and more powerful Kwamis summoned through the unification of others. Most notably, the existence of Gimme, the Kwami of Reality. The sixth season of Miraculous Ladybug will allow every Miraculous in the Chinese Miracle Box to have a full-time wielder for the first time in 200 years. With so many wielders active and the Order of Guardians re-established, the Miraculouses are entering a new era of evolution and discovery. As Ladybug learns how to use her Miraculous to create the magical charms, the other Miraculous wielders will discover new ways to harness their powers to help or hinder Paris, altering the course of human history like every wielder who came before them. It's not worth getting upset about when it's so much easier just to go back and get some Colette for everybody. <gasps> Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications to stay updated on our uploads. It's a gourmet craving of cosmic dimensions. The pastry mm -hmm. your father and his father created together is exceptional, unique.